Hey guys, this is The Game Digest and welcome to our Digestified series where we summarize or digestify the stories of your favorite games. In this episode, we will be digesting the latest Souls-like game released by Spiders, Steel Rising. This video is for those who want to know what the game's full story is or for the plot skippers who focus on the game's action rather than its narrative. But before we proceed, know that this is a spoiler-heavy summary, so if you have not finished the game, be warned. Also, know that we are making guides, digests, and reviews for every game that we play, so make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell if you want more of this content. Subscribing greatly helps and inspires us to do more quality content. Thank you, and let the digest begin. In Steel Rising, the story begins with Queen Marie Antoinette conversing with her trusted advisor, Gabrielle. Marie laments the deaths of her daughter, Sophie, and her son, Louis, and expresses fears for her safety due to her distrust of her husband, the king, Louis XVI, and the civil unrest happening all over France. We are then introduced to Aegis as Marie's loyal Queen's Guard. Aegis seems to be a sentient automat who can talk and understand humans who willfully submit to the orders and wishes of the queen. Marie, unsure of her safety and wanting to learn more about the death of her son, orders Aegis to embark on a mission to uncover the mystery that surrounds his death. Marie believes that Vaucanson, the creator of the king's automaton army, is one of those who should know about this. Thus, she tells Aegis to go look for him for answers. We learn that the king's army has now been replaced by automats and apparently human guards no longer exist. The automats seem to be your main enemies as they prevent Aegis from accomplishing the queen's orders. Before traveling to Paris, for example, she is attacked by a huge automat who she easily defeats. After fighting several automatons, Aegis then arrives in Paris and heads to Vaucanson's workshop. However, when she arrives, instead of meeting Vaucanson, she meets the Marquis de Lafayette, a general of the king but now seems to be against him and aims to put a stop to the king's automat army. Lafayette is also in the hunt for Vaucanson and is shocked to learn that automatons have now replaced the human guards surrounding the queen. Lafayette then instructs Aegis to find Abbe Guéguach as he believes that Guéguach knows the whereabouts of Vaucanson. Aegis then is tasked to find him at the Société des Amis des Noirs or Place Sainte-Marie. To travel from place to place, Aegis then uses a Vaucanson's horseless carriage. She aboards this to travel to find Grégoire. In her journey, Aegis meets Monsieur de Mirabeau, whom Vaucanson had a correspondence with. At first, Mirabeau accuses Aegis of being one of Comte de Caliostro's automats. The Cleostro is the king's right-hand man and his closest advisor. However, he finds out that it was the queen that sent her. Mirabeau then tells Aegis that he does not know where Vaucanson is. However, he reveals that there are mysterious things that surround the death of Louis and insinuates that the king, Louis's own father, had a hand in his death. He points Aegis to find Monsieur Bailly, the astronomer who has taken shelter in the Louvre, as the person that might know Vaucasson's whereabouts. Flashbacks are shown in the form of echoes, wherein it's seen that Mirabeau, Bailly, Robespierre, and Grégoire are all part of the movement to revolt against the king. Then it's revealed that Monsieur Bailly was the subject of an attack by the automatons. It is also revealed that Monsieur Lavoisier tried to have talks with the king's brother to put a stop to his madness. The king, knowing this, removed Bailly and Lavoisier as part of the king's trusted advisors. Aegis then reaches the Louvre, fights a huge automat, and then finds Bailly in a metal contraption who seems to be entranced in a never-ending nightmare. Aegis then wakes Bailly up and reveals that the Vaucanson has been captured and is in the Bastille prison. She then is instructed to go to visit Vaucanson's home to find more information about his imprisonment. Aegis in the meantime continues her search for Grégoire. She then arrives at the Saint-Marie, 
but finds a guy named Raymond who tells her that Gregoire has left for the Palais de Justice to help the Bishop of Nancy escape from captivity. Aegis tracks down Gregoire before he reaches the Palais de Justice and Gregoire, seeing Aegis' strength, asks Aegis for help to save the bishop. Aegis, in the meantime, is seen touching the ring of the bishop, when after touching it, she enters a trance-like phenomenon wherein she sees flashbacks or the echoes. It seems that there are certain objects that induce the flashbacks. In the echoes or visions, it is revealed that the bishop has been warning the people of France that the king's Ottoman army will lay waste to their land. The king, learning of the bishop's treasonous acts, also captures him and places him in a coffin-like contraption. After defeating a huge automat, Aegis then finds the bishop who is also suffering from a nightmare in a metal contraption, similar to Monsieur Bailly. The bishop then tells Aegis about Grégoire, but as far as he could remember, he has tasked Grégoire to investigate the king's honorage. The bishop then leaves and would join Gregoire at the Société des Amis des Noirs. We then see Aegis, Raymond, Gregoire, and the bishop meet. The group discusses Aegis' trance-like experience after touching the bishop's ring, describing it as if she was transferred to another world. The group discusses that this might be some form of hell or purgatory. Gregoire explains that based on the ancient document that Aegis retrieved, the document explains that past memories are attached to a person's personal objects. Like in the bishop's case, three knees or memories were removed from him, and only upon the return of those personal objects that the bishop may regain consciousness. This is exactly what happened when Aegis returned the Bible, the ring, and the cross that belonged to the bishop. Later, it is revealed that the bishop and Gregoire have been investigating the Cagliostro and have been part of the organization that would revolt against the king. Their members include the Lafayette and Mirabeau. Knowing this, Aegis embarks once again to find Lavoisier, an astronomer and also a key part of the movement. In a vision, it is seen that Lavoisier was also imprisoned by the Cagliostro and placed in a metal contraption that induces the nightmares. Aegis then frees Lavoisier from his nightmares after once again defeating a huge automat. Lavoisier then tells Aegis that he will proceed to where Mirabeau and Robespierre are. Lavoisier reunites with Mirabeau and Robespierre. The three interrogate Aegis as to why she seems to be one with their cause by helping them find Vaucanson. Aegis discloses that she is under the direct orders of the queen and seeks to reach Bastille and find Vaucanson to learn how to put a stop to the Ottoman army. Aegis also affirms that she is an ally to their cause. Later, visions of Jacques Snecker, the king's financial minister, are shown. He has also been dragged and arrested by the king's automats. It is revealed that France has gone into a huge debt due to the king's spending in his mechanical army and cannot anymore be remedied even with the most prudent tax measures. Aegis rescues Necker from a deep slumber and he tells Aegis that his arrest has been ordered by the king as he has been an accomplice to the revolutionary movement. Necker is brought to the convent by Aegis to join the others. Aegis learns that the movement is going stronger because of her. All the key figures in the movement are reuniting and they are plotting a counterattack against the king. Robespierre tells Aegis that to get to Bastille, where Vaucanson is being kept, that she needs to find Monsieur Marat. Meanwhile, Grégoire tells Aegis his theory on how the automats function. He tells her that they get their energy from the souls of the dead and they use the anima essence that permeates the purgatory. The machines are basically fueled by the dead. Thus, the more people die, the more automats there will be. Gregoire argues that this has been brought about by Flamel's work, or the alchemist. In Flamel's tomb, Gregoire adds, is where you can find his lapis philosophorum, or the philosopher's stone. Aegis then is tasked to visit the tomb, and hopefully get the stone. Then Aegis ventured to the quarry and found Monsieur Marat hiding in its inner depths, 
who then recognizes her based on the rumors of her dispensing justice all over the city. Marat expresses his hate against Lafayette and calls him a crook who led the national troops to their death. She tells Marat that she seeks Vaucanson based on the direct orders of the queen. Marat tells Aegis that to reach the Bastille, she can go through the tunnels. However, he warns her of a sanguinary automat that will stand in her way to reach Bastille, and she needs to defeat it. Marat tells Aegis that his companion Delacroix attempted an attack on the Bastille, but was defeated. Marat describes him as a brilliant writer and a military engineer and one of the great leaders of the cause. Aegis then went to the tunnel and fought the automat guarding it. She found Laclaw and awakened him from his nightmare. The Laclaw tells Aegis that the significant figures in the convent such as Lafayette, Necker, Maribo are tainted by corruption and cannot be fully trusted. Aegis then confronts Lafayette regarding Marat's accusations. Lafayette vehemently denied this and argues that he did not call for the uprising and that it was the National Guard that came together on their own. This was the work of the soldiers, he said. Only after they had gathered the troops had they only asked him to lead them. However, through a manifesto that Aegis discovered, she found out that Lafayette was the one who instigated the National Guard's uprising. Lafayette did not deny this and confessed. However, he rationalized his actions, stating that the uprising of the soldiers was the best way to go, as it would not involve civilians. A civilian uprising, he said, could lead the whole country into complete disarray. After this, Aegis tries to complete her quest involving Flamel. Gregoire further explains that the Nemes go back to the beginning of time, where in ancient Greece a man bound his soul to an inanimate object. Gregoire explains that this has been the early work of necromancers. He says that when a soul is fragmented, three shards of memory or nemes are torn from its consciousness and take shelter in three objects that the person holds dear. Based on Flamel's book, Flamel describes three journeys into what he calls the in-between, a strange world filled with wandering souls and tormented spirits who cannot proceed to heaven. Gregoire then tells Aegis that her spirit may be freed by breaking the bond between the automat and her true self, or the person that feeds the soul into the automat, and the only way to do this is shutting her down. Aegis then asks Lavoisier if he could shut her down so she could visit the purgatory to find Flamel. Meanwhile, in a vision, it is revealed that Aegis is Athenaeus of Vaucanson the daughter of Eugène Vaucanson, automat dancer and friend, which she named Ludia. After this, Athenai's secret box was shown to Mr. Bailly. Bailly identifies the box and tells Aegis that it was his gift to Athenai on her 15th birthday. Bailly observes that there seems to be a close connection between Athenai's deep slumber and Aegis' sentience. Bailly then tells Aegis that it is Athenaeus' spirit which animates her. However, it seems that only a part of Athenaeus' spirit gives Aegis life as her memories and feelings are not present. Lavoisier and Monsieur Bailly then discover a way to help Aegis shut down to let her reach purgatory or the in-between. They discover that built in in Aegis was a timer which Athanais used to time Aegis' dances. Lavoisier and Monsieur Bailly will use the same timer to put a period in Aegis' inactivity to not completely shut her down. Aegis is given a maximum period of 15 minutes to travel to Purgatory, otherwise her whole being will completely shut down. Using this strategy, Aegis enters Purgatory by shutting down for 15 minutes. She meets the soul of Nicolas Flamel. Flamel tells Aegis that her soul has been in Purgatory for a long time, but it was the first time she spoke to him. That also many travelers have passed in between, including the bishop, Monsieur Bailly, Lavoisier, and Necker. As with the Philosopher's Stone, he reveals that the stone is in Cagliostro's hands, 
and uses it to keep the travelers in limbo and makes them the masters of automats or the Iron Titans. After traveling to Purgatory, Aegis returns to the convent. Gregoire then affirms his theory based on Aegis' experience, making it crystal clear that the subjects who are bound to the automats have their souls remain in the in-between world. Gregoire also tells Aegis that the anchor stone that keeps Flamel in purgatory is in the ancient chalice of Saint Jacques, found in the same convent. Aegis then breaks the stone found in the chalice, which frees Flamel from purgatory. Shortly after this, Aegis reaches Bastille and wakes Charles Sanson from his slumber, who is revealed to be the executor of the court's rulings, or the executioner of Paris. He then gives Aegis the key to Vaucan sans to allow her to free him. He tells her to hurry as Vaucan sans is nearing death. Aegis then finally finds Vaucan sans and he immediately recognizes Aegis' voice as that of Athanais, his child. Vaucan sans has visibly been tortured and severely injured. Vaucan sans laments how his creations have been utilized for evil. Vaucanson begs Aegis to put a stop to the king and Cagliostro to end the nightmare that France finds itself in. Vaucanson also pleads that Aegis free Athenais from the in-between. However, he reminds Aegis that she will also die thereafter, as Aegis is foremost merely a vessel and would be left without a soul once Athenais wakes up. Vaucanson shortly dies thereafter. Aegis informs the figures in the convent that Vaucanson has passed. The lot then decides to help Aegis by finally storming the king's palace in Versailles to put an end to the king's tyranny. Aegis then helps the queen as she finds out that the queen's palace is under siege. While defending the queen, a large automat is about to attack Aegis. However, the queen intervenes and orders the automat to stop which surprisingly heeds the queen's order. While distracted, Aegis immobilizes the automat. Aegis then tells the queen that the creature only wanted to be near the queen and not attack her. She tells the queen that the soul that animates the large automat was the soul of the queen's son, Louis, and in the king's notes, it is divulged that it was her own husband that caused the death of their son solely for the reason that the large automat may be animated. Aegis then meets Lafayette and Gabrielle. They tell Aegis that the queen has rushed to the king to make him pay for what he has done. Aegis rushes to save the queen from the king. Aegis then defeats the large queen-like automat guarding the king and the Cagliostro. She then confronts and immobilizes the king. She then rushes to the room where Athenais' body is kept and sees the Cagliostro about to stab the sleeping body of Athenais. Aegis then quickly puts a stop to this and attacks Cagliostro. Seeing Athenais for the first time, she appreciates her beauty. And Aegis says her goodbye to her. Aegis wakes Athenais up by breaking the stone that tethered her with Athenais. Aegis' body falls down, lifeless and without a soul. Cagliostro escapes but he was so badly injured that the convent council lets him be as they decide he will die from his wounds. We learn that the queen died by the hands of her husband. The council then agrees that the automats will slowly die as no more souls will feel the automatons. Further, the Lafayette argues that he should be the one who should lead the country, for he argues that he was the one who contributed most to the movement. In the end, it seems that the council decided that it is Lafayette that should lead the country up until the king's heir comes of age and is able to lead the country. The king is then placed in front of the people to be beheaded by guillotine. Athenais witnesses the king's beheading. The story of steel rising ends here.
Did you enjoy our video? What game would you like to be digested next? Feel free to post down below your comments. If you want more gaming content, be sure to like and subscribe to the Game Digest and don't forget to enable notifications by clicking on the bell icon. Thank you for your support and stay tuned for our next game guides, digests, and reviews. We'll see you next time. Cheers.